I want to teach you guys how to add your own billing. And I guess you could argue that this is something that the reception staff should do and not something that the doctor should know how to do. But personally, if you have seen any of my videos, you will probably see that I'm a little bit of a control freak type person. And I just like to know how to do things and make sure they are done properly. I will show you in another video how to generate your own reports. And I have noticed that sometimes items get missed. And so every day I will check my own report from the previous day and see whether the numbers that I asked the reception to put through were actually put through. And just to be clear, I feel that our receptionists do an amazing job. It is a very busy job. And from my own personal experience of being a GP trainee where they made me do the reception job for a day, it is a difficult job as well. So sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming where you have someone saying, hey, can you add a number here? Patients are screaming at you. Someone wants something else. And so sometimes things can get missed. And the main reason I use this adding billing is primarily to add the 723s. We do a lot of care plans and care plans are very useful for many reasons. And one of the main reasons is that patients can get a subsidy to see an allied health provider up to five times every calendar year and you can renew your management plan every 366 days. Now this session is not to explain how to do care plans or when you can build care plans. This is a session to explain how to add the billing in best practice. But if you want to read more about how to do care plans, well, you would go onto this website, search the item number, which is 721, and then read this, <laughs> the explanatory notes, which are pretty confusing and very, very long. But the idea is that when you create your care plan for your patient and you print out the care plan for them, you give them the paperwork so that they can get their allied health provider sessions, you can build a 721 but you can't actually bill the 723 unless you have consent from the providers that are part of that care plan. And there are a few ways that you can get consent. One of them is you can get written consent where you can send a letter to the provider, they sign it, email it or fax it back to you and then you can build the 723 or another option is that you can ask your nurses to call the providers and get verbal consent and they can also then get a copy of the care plan. And so the way that we do it is that when we see a patient and I do the care plan for them, because we are a private billing practice, we do charge a small gap for the 721 and that gets paid on the day. But in the meantime, I send a message to the nurses, can you please get verbal consent from the other providers? And in their time, they will call the providers, speak to them, get verbal consent, plus minus sending them a copy of the care plan, because I always give a copy of the care plan to the patient, which they effectively take to that provider anyways. And then they write back to me and say either verbal or written consent consent obtained. And that can often be a few days after we did the care plan or even a week or two after we did the care plan. And so when I get that F8, I do have the option of just forwarding it to reception and write, hey, can you please build a 723 for me? And then the reception has to go through that task on top of all the other tasks that they're going through. And then remember to bill it on the day that the care plan was created. Again, it's just a lot of steps that can go wrong and that unfortunately have gone wrong a few times. Or I can just quickly watch one of Mike's videos on how to add billings in best practice and just do it myself. And so let me show you how to do that. I need to show you this on a real patient. We are going to blur out all of their details for you. Go into open billing history. At this point, go into new account. Now, as I explained previously, for people that are over the age of 12, don't have a healthcare card or a pension card, we add in a private gap for the 721. However, for the 723, it would just get really complicated if we started adding gaps for that as well, which would effectively mean after a few days, we'd call the patient up and the reception would have to explain that the doctor is adding in another item number and you have to pay another gap. So that's just way too complicated. We will just bulk bill the 723. And the way that you do that is you go to bill to Medicare direct bill. Now, just like I explained, you have to change the service date and the service date is up here. So if we did the care plan a few days ago, you have to go back to that previous service date. So let's say it's the 24th. Now, the way that you would add your 723 is you would go down to add item. And just like when you put through a billing, you just put through the number 723. Click and add. So at this point, Medicare direct bill, we've backdated the service date to when we actually created the care plan. And now we just click on store. Because this is just an example, I'm gonna remove this for you. Right click, cancel, cancel this invoice. And the reason we're gonna cancel this invoice is service not provided. Brilliant, and that has disappeared.